Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to be making some salmon berry rhubarb jam. This will be my second time doing it. And my first batch turned out really good and it was the first time I've ever done anything with salmon berries other than just pick them and eat them while I was out hiking and happened to see them growing. Now, if you're new to salmon berries, you never heard of them, there's something that only grows here on the Pacific Northwest. I don't think they grow anywhere else, mostly along the coast of Washington and Oregon. And here's a, here they are right here. And I also will put a picture right here. And right now, this is a late June, and they're growing, this is when the the berries are in season, the salmon berries in particular. Blackberries have about another two months before they're ready here. And I've never been super crazy about the taste of salmon berries. They just don't have that just real powerful flavor that a lot of berries that I really like have. Yet, um, these ones I thought, I guess because it's just my own property, tasted pretty good. And I figured I'd finally break down and try making some jam from them. Now I've heard two different stories where some people say they make great jam some people say they make terrible jam and i just decided to experiment and was really happy with the way it turned out now because they have a very what i would consider a more bland flavor while still good uh, and sometimes the seeds can have just a little bit of bitterness to them um, i decided it would be best to combine them with rhubarb to help really bring the flavor out and it turned out great and i love how it tastes tasted mixed in with milk kefir. The batches I have to make are very small. This is a result of my picking today. It's not like blackberries. And when you go to pick blackberries, you can have pick a gallon in no time and five gallons in maybe a couple of hours. But when it comes to salmon berries, they're spread out. They're just, they're far more sparse. They don't grow in big clusters the way blackberries do. So it takes time to gather. However, for me, it's a chance that I can get to go to the property, take the dog for a walk, get some fresh air, get out in the sun a little bit, and and just get some exercise and do something productive at the same time. I'm not it's not gonna make a whole lot, but it's one of those things that I can make now just to use right away while I wait for the blackberries and other types of berries to get ripe and then go pick them. Now if you don't like seeds, berry seeds, you're gonna want to look into more making a jelly out of these because one thing about salmon berries, they tend to have bigger seeds than blackberries and raspberries, and so it tends to make the jam a lot more seedy, which is, again, another good reason to combine it with other types of fruit or rhubarb to sort of break up that seediness. So, But I like seeds. I love berry seeds. There's always a lot of good nutrition. Typically, the seeds are where you're going to find a lot of your minerals, and so I try to get them as much as possible, but I know some people just can't stand them or simply can't have them and I get that but so anyway if you're not into jam uh, you may want to find another recipe where people like to make jelly today it's going to be jam so I'm doing this without any added pectin uh, which is the way I always make jam now I never buy pectin anymore I just make it with the fruit using the old-fashioned method which is really easy and also makes it so that you can adjust your sugar ratio to much smaller and i did a video i think last year on making blackberry jam and i i did both i did one totally sugar free no added sugar and some with just a little bit of sugar and so you know i've been experimenting finding the right ratio of sugar now with your salmon berries and rhubarb you're probably going to want to use a little bit more sugar than you would with blackberry but you don't have to do like you do when you buy the pectin from the store and you follow the directions where you have like a cup of fruit and you know 20 cups of sugar yes i'm exaggerating but really there always ends up being more sugar than fruit where when you do it the old-fashioned way you can use half the amount of sugar of fruit so you can do five cups of fruit and two and a half cups of sugar and have a really good jam anyway let's get started and i'll show you what i do with the salmon berries so one of the first things I like to do with the salmon berries is they tend to get a lot of bugs in them. Probably, well, so do blackberries, but with salmon berries, the bugs like to hide even more so inside the berry themselves. So I like to soak them for, for a little bit first, but because the, the salmon berries are a little more watery than your blackberries, then I like to make sure they drain thoroughly after I do that. So let them sit for several minutes and strain out. You may even want to put them on a towel. 
I don't worry about getting all the water out because it'll cook out in the way that I'm going to do this. So the first thing I want to do is figure out how many cups, which is probably going to be maybe a cup and a half tops, of berries I actually have. So I take my measuring cup and just start filling it up, and then I'm going to mash those berries down as much as possible. See, I probably don't even have a cup and a half looking at what's there. I might only have a full cup by the time I finish mashing these down because I want to fill up all the air gaps to figure out exactly how much is in there because you know how berries are. Once you mash them down, they don't make that much. So we'll put some, put the rest in there. Okay, so I was right. It's just, it's a very full cup. So probably just a little bit more than a cup that's in there. And I'm going to go ahead and dump that into my pan. Okay, and we can smash those down some more. Okay, and so to that, my, my uh, rhubarb's finally been taken off a little later than what's usual for around here. But... I think today is Jan, uh, June 28th. It's either the 28th or the 29th. So then I'm just going to chop up my rhubarb and I want about, I don't want any more than 50% of what's going into this to be rhubarb because I don't want it too tart. I'm just trying to bring out the flavor of the berries and just add a little bit more flavor to it. So I'm just chopping this up. You don't have to chop it super small. And uh, just small enough that you know you can get an idea on measurement. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with a half cup of this because it's kind of loose. I mean the way it is. I don't need very much. Last time I did it, I think maybe the rhubarb made up about a quarter of the uh, of the full amount. So that's about that should be about a half cup. It was it was high, but considering all the air spaces in there. Okay, so that gives me a cup and a half, half of fruit. Of course, technically rhubarb isn't a fruit, but we always think of it as a fruit when we're using it this way. A cup and a half of fruit means I'm gonna use about a half cup of sugar up to three quarters, probably no more than that. So let's start with a half cup of sugar. Okay, and then I'm just gonna mix that in real well. Making jam the old-fashioned way is actually super easy. You don't have to follow all these directions so closely. You just got to figure out how much sugar you think you want in there. It doesn't have to be precise. It's just all a matter of taste. And then, you know, and then just cook it until it gets thick. It's super easy. Okay, so now I've got the jam over here or the make the preparation. So all I've got in here is sugar rhubarb and salmon berries and I've got my heat turned up all the way just to let it hurry up and get hot and once it comes to a full boil I'm going to turn it down and I'm just going to let it keep boiling and cooking and keeping an eye on it until it gets to the right consistency for jam so I'll be back when this is uh when this starts cooking it's started boiling and so you want to keep stirring it and then checking it and it's a when it's at a rolling boil, which means it doesn't, which it almost is, stirring it doesn't uh, stir down the boil, then you're going to probably just turn your heat down a little bit at a time. And the whole idea is to just keep cooking it. Now, some options that you can add to this for flavor will be like your homemade extracts, such as raspberry, orange, or vanilla and that can add a little bit more flavor and i was kind of thinking about maybe doing a combination i didn't do this last time but i thought i'd try it this time so i'm going to put in a little bit of the raspberry and a little bit of the vanilla just for a little added whoa that was more than a little bit that's just for a little added flavor and another thing you can do right here is add a little bit of butter just a tiny bit of butter and that's going to help keep that from getting foamy. I personally don't mind the foaminess, but you really only need a tiny bit if you want to do it. I'll just go ahead and put it in just for demonstration purposes, but I don't normally do this because I don't really mind that. It's just, it's really up to the person. And so again, you're just going to keep cooking and stirring and cooking and stirring and then checking it as you go. What's going to happen, it's got a ways to go yet, but it's gonna, when it starts getting to that point where it's 
it's going to be jam consistency. Obviously, it's still hot, so you won't. It's kind of hard to tell. But when it starts sheeting off of the spoon, which it's not doing right now, it's just pouring like regular liquid. And then another thing you can do is put it in, uh, drop a little bit on a plate and let it sit there. And then check it and see if it uh, turns gelatinous at all. And then uh, that's one way. Or you can drop a little bit in cold water and check for the softball stage. And that's when it just kind of turns into a little uh, gelatinous ball in the cold water. So anyway, I'm just going to keep cooking and stirring and I'll come back when this is ready. Okay, so I want you to see that the the way it's boiling, I've got the heat turned down quite a bit now. I, mean, I could just keep turning the heat down as it goes. And uh, it's, uh, it's, pretty, it's getting pretty thick. Now see how it falls from the spoon? It just falls differently. I can tell by the looks of it. It's one of those things that you just got to practice with it. But I can tell by the look and the feel of the way the spoon, there's a little more resistance dragging it through there that it is about uh, at jam consistency. Then the other thing you can do is stick it in a bowl or a, a small bowl or just a little dab or on a plate and then let it sit or set it in the refrigerator and then see if it sets up. Now it's still warm, so it's still moving around in there, but I can still tell by the temperature of it, the fact that it's still warm and yet it still is pretty thick that I know that it's ready for jam. So I can take this off the heat, stir it just a little bit more here. You want to make sure when it's you know when it starts thickening up, especially and that and it's really hot, that you keep stirring it or you'll burn it. Okay, now what I've done, I've been stirring this a while, it's letting it cool just a little bit, but I've also taken my jar and heated it up. When I'm doing stuff like this, I just heat my jars in the microwave. It's a quick, easy way to do it. The main thing is you want your jar hot enough that when you pour your hot jam or apple butter or whatever it is in there, it's not going to crack. One thing I like about using the microwave is I don't have to worry about any, you know, like when you boil, when you put it in hot water, is I don't have to worry about there being any liquid or water to strain out or drain out of the jar. It's, the jar is dry and then I can just put it right in there. Now, I don't mind that it's just this little bit. I hadn't been, planned on canning it. Um, when it comes to salmon berry, anything salmon berry jam related, it's probably going to be always like this and something I simply use right away. Okay, so you can see the little bit that I put in the bowl. I didn't stick this in the refrigerator and look, it's thickened up a lot since that, uh, since that last clip that I showed. And so it's definitely going to be jam. Uh, it's going to take a while for it to cool completely where it's set up. But what I'll do here is... Um, when I'm going to allow this to cool and I'm going to go ahead and insert some either video clips and or photos right here of the finished jam once it's all set up. So you can see how simple it is to make, especially when you're talking berry jam with the seeds in it because there's a lot of pectin in those seeds and the more uh, you throw in a few unripe berries, not hard, you know, but to that point where like, like say blackberries. When they're red berries, when, when I do blackberry jam and I'm out there picking the berries, I always try to make sure to get some red berries in there too. Get some really ripe ones for the flavor, the medium one for that firmness, and then some, some red ones to help the jam to set up better and add a little bit more tartness to it. So you're getting all the best parts of the berries when, you're do, when you do that. I do the same thing when I'm picking the salmon berries. I'll get some yellow ones and some red ones and then as, try, as many orange ones as I can get because those are the ones that are going to have the most flavor. So uh, if you're making a jelly, you're probably going to have to use a pectin. And I've heard a lot of good things about the Pomona pectin. It's, you know, it's the stuff you buy, you know, standard stuff you buy in the stores, I think it's made out of genetically modified ingredients. So look into the Pomona. I've heard, I think I'm saying it right. I've heard some good things about that. But for me, I love jam. I'm not a big jelly person. I love whole fruit. And so pectin is something I just simply don't need. So there it is. Uh, just one thing that you can do with your salmon berries if you've got salmon berries around you or maybe for those who, are, who don't have salmon berries, you can use this method for any kind of berry jam. I have yet to try it with peaches. I feel pretty certain it would work really well with peaches without having to add any pectin or any kind of fruit like apples that is high in pectin already. 
Uh, it, all fruit, I think if I remember correctly, most fruit has at least some pectin in it. Some is just higher in, uh, in some fruits like berries and apples than in others. But mixing them together, blending them with certain other fruits is going to also help. Just be creative and that way you can control the amount of sugar or honey you choose to add. Now I, I use organic cane sugar and non-GMO kind of stuff, but if you have plenty of honey because you're keeping bees, then I recommend using honey. And what I did was I tasted this. It was pretty good, but real tart because of the rhubarb. And so I added just another eighth cup of sugar to it to get it just right. But I tell you what, the raspberry and vanilla extracts in there really gave it a wonderful flavor. And the, the aroma, just the aroma of the salmon berries cooking alone, it's got a very sweet floral type smell and I love the smell of it. And adding those extracts in there just gave it even more wonderful aroma and a really great flavor. And if you like these kind of recipes um, and see in different ways that I like to blend fruits because I do something different every year. I'm always making stuff up as I go. Then I will keep more coming out. I plan on doing another video on the blueberry and currant rhubarb jam that I plan on making because I've this year is the biggest year for rhubarb for me because my plants are really big and healthy. They're getting lots of sun and so it's really starting to blow up right now. And so I need to find more ways to use it my rhubarb anyway. And um, typically for me, I like using rhubarb in other mixed with other fruits like, you know, for pies and for jams and also for making creamsicles. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.